Mainstream media is responsible for the regression of America, where we wait to find out the race of a victim to gauge our response. Mainstream media has turned its back on this child because he just didn't fit that narrative. One of the goals of this channel is to bring you things that the mainstream media won't. And this time, they have thoroughly exposed themselves as being biased. And this story is so disturbing and so shocking and so sad. And then you combine the narrative of the fact that CNN and MSNBC completely ignored it which is a dangerous precedent. CNN and MSNBC completely ignore shocking murder of five-year-old white boy by black neighbor. Leftist news net network CNN and MSNBC are completely ignoring the shocking murder of five-year-old Cannon, and that's Hennett by a black neighbor. Cannon Hennett, who was supposed to start kindergarten this week, Witnesses say Cannon was playing on his bike in front of his dad's house Sunday afternoon when a man walked up, put a gun to his head, and pulled the trigger. Arriving officers and EMS attempted life-saving efforts and took the boy to the hospital, but Cannon could not be saved. The suspect, 25-year-old Darius, Darius Sessoms, was arrested Monday and charged with first-degree murder. He lived next uh, door. A five-year-old in North yeah. Carolina uh, who was shot riding his bike in his front yard. Um, and then his neighbor, uh, Darius Sessoms, shot this kid. Not necessarily um, entirely clear. There's a GoFundMe that was started by, uh, I believe, a family member. Have we confirmed that? I think it yeah. is confirmed. Yeah, so. uh, who says that the boy did ride into this man's yard. And, and earlier Not really that, they said that he came over, the, the killer came over to their house the day before. So right. they yeah. knew each other. And it's like... A, now, did he come over to complain about horrible. the kid riding his bicycle? I don't know. They said for dinner. They said for yeah. dinner. Yeah. For yeah. dinner. Yeah. 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 So do we have any, was this just a case of mistaken identity where he thought it was someone else riding a bicycle on his lawn who he had a five year old on a bicycle? I don't know how you yeah. make that mistake. I can't think of a context where that makes sense. No, I can't think of a yeah. context where it makes sense. And the police right now haven't thought of a context where yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, Insane. I believe that actually um, there are charges. that have been. story that we want to discuss today is yeah. um, happened in North Carolina. It involved a five-year-old white kid. Yeah, by the name of uh, Cannon Hennett. Yeah, he was just riding his bike. His Mind his own business. Mind his own business. Um, his sisters was out there watching him ride his bike. Right. And when a neighbor by the name of uh, Darius Sessoms, who happens to be a black guy, just came over yeah. and shot the kid in the head. Hmm. Now, when, yeah. And, and to our I, knowledge, they were neighbors. They were cordial. They yeah. even knew each other. Yeah, the Darius Sessoms, the guy that shot the five-year-old in the head yeah. and killed him, hmm. he actually sat with the kid's father and uh, I think they ate food. Yeah, ate dinner, broke, you know, broke bread together. Right, so mm -hmm. which is uh, really bizarre. I don't know what was the motivation behind yeah. this killing. I just know it was pure evil. Yeah. And it was a tragedy. And everybody should walk away from this video knowing evil come in all colors, black, white, brown, and in everywhere in between. Yeah. Uh, but again, the reason why we want to discuss this story is not to expect exploit death like the left does all the time. They, if these roles were reversed in yeah. this story, if Cannon was a black kid and he was killed at the hands of a white guy, they would paint this as a white supremacist and yeah. we need more gun control. Yeah, this would be, uh, this would be mainstream news. Yeah. But because it's a white kid mm -hmm. and it's a black man who killed a white kid, you ain't gonna hear anything it's about not, it. Yeah. You don't hear no mention this, mainstream media. That's why we're talking about this story because the media yeah. is pitting left versus right, black versus white.
but I'm tearing you asunder And there's a thunder in our hearts, baby So much hate for the ones we love Tell me we both matter, don't we? Have to sit down up against that wall over there for a few minutes. Where did that come from? Shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, there we go. Yeah. So what happened, man? Know, what happened? Got a little too close. People are just swinging. No, I think they were getting on somebody, and I struck. I swung and knocked you. Oh. That is blood and teeth. Yeah, look at this guy over here. Oh fuck, that's him. What happened?
Yep. in St. Louis trying to protect a friend's store from looters, and he was murdered for doing it. This country ought to remember Dorn. He represents the best of America. Instead, his name has been shoved down the memory hole. The media would like him forgotten immediately so they can go back to inflaming hateful violence across our nation. We should not let that happen. He was not the only victim, by the way, of these riots, and not the only victim who has been forgotten. We think that's a shame. On Twitter, former White House speechwriter Darren Beatty, and good for him, has been keeping track of the casualties of this rioting, and we want to read some of them to you because it's important to remember people who've been killed. More than just one, many. David Patrick Underwood was a Federal Protective Service officer in California. A week ago, he was shot to death. We don't know who killed him. He was protecting a federal building in Oakland. One of his colleagues was also critically injured in that shooting. Italia Marie Kelly was just 22 years old. She was attending a George Floyd-related protest in Davenport, Iowa. She became uncomfortable with the direction of that protest, understandably. She got in her car to leave, and she was killed by a stray bullet, shot dead. Jose Gutierrez was a bystander. He was watching as others looted the Chicago suburb of Cicero. For being there, he was shot in the head and killed by this man, Zion Haygood. That's what police say. Another victim in Cicero, Illinois, was Victor Cesares Jr. He was 27. He was shot to death outside a grocery store. No one remembers his name. We should. In Minneapolis, Francisco Montiel, who was 46, was found dead next to a burned-out car. Police attributed his death to, quote, complex homicidal violence. That's obvious. He was a casualty of the riots. At least three people were murdered during the violence in Indianapolis. One of them was 38-year-old former Indiana football player Chris Beatty. He was found shot to death just outside his apartment. An unnamed Latino man in his 20s was also killed on Sunday in Los Angeles in an area that was completely demolished by rioters. And of course, those are just the ones who were killed, probably not an exhaustive list. If you know more, please send them to us. Thousands have been hurt, maimed, financially ruined, brain damaged over the past week. Dozens of those are police officers. They were injured trying to protect the public. One of them is Las Vegas police officer Shea McLanus. He was shot during the riot on Monday. The man who shot him says it was an accident. He was just trying to scare away rioters. We don't know the truth, but the man took a bullet to the head. The police officer did. Every one of those people deserves to be remembered. But instead, again, they are forgotten, and they're forgotten on purpose. The press would like these protests to go down in history as mostly peaceful. They're not, and they're not in part because CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, and many others have been inflaming racial tensions around the country. They're inciting violence. They don't care about the consequences. The rest of us should care. Those are human beings, they're Americans, and now they're gone. And you know who did it? The people on our streets, they should be held accountable for what they did. 
Well, for months and months, you'll remember, our leaders made it illegal for you to protest anything, even to go to church. The coronavirus lockdowns were enforced. But now that our streets are overrun with Black Lives Matter protests and riots, they've changed their minds. Your protests are still illegal. They're racist. The ones destroying our country? Essential. We'll tell you what they said after the break. If I die young, bury me inside, lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river at dawn, send me away with the words of a love song. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, make me a rainbow, I'll shine down on my mother, she'll know I'm safe with you when she stands under A short life Well, I've had just enough time If I die young, bury me inside Lay me down on a bed of roses Sink me in the river at dawn Send me away with the words of a love song The sharp knife of a short life